Hello everybody, welcome back to Leeton. My name's Jace and this channel is about our journey to become more self-sufficient in veg, fruit, eggs and maybe some honey. Now today, it's about British. It's about a staple in the British uh, culinary uh, encyclopedia of food. And if you're British or you've been to Britain or you know a bit about British cuisine, you'll know that we love our fish and chips. And one of the things that we have with fish and chips is mushy peas. And if you've never had mushy peas, then you need to go and get some. You can buy them in tins, but it's not the same as getting it from the chip shop but it's basically peas that are soaked in they're dried and then soaked in oh what is it now i will let you know later in the video it slipped my memory um and then boiled and mashed and what have you and it is absolutely gorgeous it sounds revolting and they look revolting but they are absolutely gorgeous now it's a particular type of pea that you use or grow to make mushy peas and they are marrow fat peas and I thought for a bit of fun this year <clears throat> I don't normally grow peas because of the fat factor involved in a big area for not that much crop you've got all the podding and shelling to do and it's a lot of work for not much reward but I thought this year for a bit of fun because I've never grown marrow fat peas before and I thought for a bit of fun I'm gonna have a go and I'm gonna set up a trellis on the side of my shed which is south facing put some troughs down with some compost in and grow some marrow fat peas and then when I've harvested them let them dry process them and make my own mushy peas maybe get some nice fish and we'll we'll have a fish and chip and homemade mushy pea night just for some fun so I've got my bucket of tea which is another English tradition British tradition and I'm gonna get sorted out get the camera in position get some materials together some compost and some troughs and some trellis and some screws and bits of wood and all the rest of it and we're gonna grow some mushy peas Okay, so this area along here, oh, this is where I'm going to grow them this year. Now, well, this path is going to all be sorted out and levelled and turned into steps and things like that. But I'm not going to be doing that until at least the winter this year. So I can grow my peas in troughs like that one along here. Now, because it's all slopey, I'm going to have to get some bricks and level them up. And then I'm going to get some timber and some mesh that I've got and I'm just going to fix it to this shed here and this is south facing it's red hot when the sun's out in the summer so it's going to be really good the only stumbling block I'm going to have with these troughs is keeping them moist enough in the summer so I'm going to have to pay particular attention to watering and maybe even I'll mulch them with some grass cuttings or something so I'm going to get this sorted out. This pot, strawberries, and there's one that's been growing. So I'm going to move this out of the way. In fact, do I need to move that out of the way? I can probably leave that there. Just move it that way a little bit. This, I want to get out of here before I start.
this is a whole roll of polythene that we just found under the shed when we moved in. It's only a metre wide unfortunately, but still very useful, so I'll take that out before I start. So this trough that was there is just garden soil really. And I shoved a few strawberry plants in it last year. They didn't do very well. And I've got lots of strawberries as you can see from the, other, the video I did the other day. So this lot will come out and we'll put it there. I'm going to sort that out another day. Okay, there's a trough. So, the plan is to screw a batten to the shed at both ends and one in the middle. And then I've got this black plastic uh, square mesh that again we just found in the garden when we moved in. And, and then I'm going to put that across there and put a batten on top of it to clamp it in place. So, a few nails have been working their way out the shed with the heat. those back in okay because this wood's really thin I'm going to drill some pilot holes otherwise if I just drive a screw through there all I'm going to do is split the wood so we'll start, start at the bottom of the shed I'm probably going to cut these off below the windowsill height so Happy days. Right, we can screw that. I'm going to drill a few more of those, the same, and then we'll get it screwed to the shed. Now if you're going to screw something to the shed, to your, to your shed, then put it, screw it where the frame of the shed is on the inside. If you screw it here, that wood's only about that thick and you'll probably split it and the screws will come through the other side and then you'll catch your hands on them and all that lot when you're working in your shed. You might even screw so through something that's important in the shed. So put it where the battens are on the inside and you can tell where they are because that's where the nails are holding 
the ship lap one. So. So this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky. Because I'm going to need three or four hands. But I'm sure I'll manage somehow. So, I actually found that as long as I stay away from the ends, this wood will take these small um, drywall screws okay. So I don't have to pre-drill. So, what I want to do is put the screw between two, within a square, if that makes sense. Let me turn the camera. So what I want to do is put the screw within a square of the mesh. So that's going to mean... where my fingers are. I'm going to put the screw through and then get my wood the same height. And go for it. It's got that trap there now, so then I can do one a bit lower down. the other end.
just noticed that that trough hasn't got any holes in the bottom. Now, these are the seeds I bought. They are Marifat Peas Ambassador variety. Now, you don't get many in a packet. There's 35 in this packet from Bolly Bulbs, which I bought on from Amazon. And the reason I went to Amazon is when I went to the garden centre the other weekend, which was, it's um, a well-known a chain of garden centres in the UK, probably one of the biggest, they didn't have any Marifat peas. They had pretty much every other variety. But, so they're perhaps not as popular. And I think it's because they grow so quite big and uh, just perhaps from a taste point of view as a normal pea, not so good. So the destructions say Plant seeds two and a half centimetres deep, about five centimetres apart. Plant in rows. Well, I'm not going to plant in rows, it's just going to be one row. Water sparingly. Don't let them dry out, or no pods will be produced. Keep them well picked, and then that encourages more pods to form. <coughs> uh, Pick them in the morning after the dew has dried when they are crispiest. Okay, I've never heard that one before, but see, I, I stopped growing peas quite a few years ago because they're just a faff. You know, as I said at the beginning of the video, a lot of work, a lot of space for little reward, really. And I started growing monge too for that very reason. No podding, no shelling, uh, etc. The only thing I would say, if you grow normal peas and you shell them, you do get a lot of stuff to go on your compost heap. So, get all the pods. Right, so they've got 35 in here and we've got four troughs. Is that eight, nine, something like that, per, per trough. So perhaps I'll do nine in that one eight in that one because that's slightly shorter that's probably too eight probably too many let's let's just get started in fact i'm going to get some sticks and i think what i'm going to do is Put that through there and down to the bottom of the pot and put it the right way up so the point's facing down and then the pea can start growing up the stick and so that's one each end then we'll go middle for diddle And then we'll go two, two between those. That's not right. Middle, and then that one should be. How many is that? 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's eight in that one. Okay. And then. Just look like a normal pea. Here's the only trouble in it when you buy stuff online. Am I actually going to get what I ordered? Still, we will find out. So I'm just going to make a hole in front of each cane. Put one in each. There we go. Fill them back in. Superb. Right, I'm going to do the rest of these. Okay, so out of the 35, I've got two left. So, I'm just gonna plant an extra one there, and an extra one there. That'll be fine. And then, job done I'm not going to water them because that compost pretty damp anyway and it looks like it's gonna rain in a minute well, I have just had a thought at the front here at the front of these pots I'm gonna sow some carrots now not normal carrots not the long carrots the little ball carrots so I'm gonna go get a packet of those and we'll put in a little row of carrots along the front of each one and because of the ball type they obviously don't need the depth and that's a way of me using up a bit of this space because obviously the peas are going to mainly grow upwards and if I keep them a little bit sparse sparse at the bottom take maybe take some of the leaves off the bottom just to give the carrots some light then we might get a double crop out of four little troughs and one 60 litre bag of compost which cost £4.45 right so these little short carrots Royal Chantenay 3 it says so March to June harvest June to October so let's give them a go I don't normally grow these type of carrots but Julie was out shopping, she went to Wilco's, she bought the packet, so we'll see what they're like. Shallow furrow with my finger along there. Try and sparingly sprinkle them in. You cover it back, are you?
Oh, I'm really pleased with that. That looks, it looks quite professional. It looks like somebody that knew what they were doing did that. Happy days. So, 35 pea plants on there. And at this end, look, I can put another pot and grow something up that mesh. Maybe, what can I grow up there? Cucumber. Yeah, I could grow a cucumber up there. <clears throat> One of those huge cucumbers that I've already got growing that I sowed way too early and then kept in basically a, green, a heated greenhouse and it now needs planting out. Although the weather is warming up this week, this weekend, but then looking at the forecast next week, it's back down to six degrees on the night. So not, not the time to be putting cucumbers out just yet, but I am gonna have to put out the courgettes, but I'm gonna build them a special little home and that'll be coming up in a video over the weekend. Okay, everybody, so, um, I'm just editing the video and I got to the part where I said I would tell you how they're made basically, how you make mushy peas and of course I didn't do that while I was outside so I thought I'd quickly do it now. And this is on the BBC Good Food website, Easy Mushy Peas and just some info here, per serving, now I don't know how big a serving is doesn't actually say, I don't think, but 166 calories, four grams of fat, three grams of saturates, 20 grams of carbs, one gram of sugars, eight grams of fiber, eight grams of protein, and 0.3 grams of salt. So the ingredients are 250 grams of dried marrow fat peas, two tablespoons of bicarbonate of soda, 25 grams of salted butter, mint and lemon. So step one, put the peas in bicarbonate of soda in a large heat proof bowl and cover with boiling water. Leave to soak for 12 hours overnight. Step two, drain the peas, rinse them twice with cold water to wash off the bicarbonate of soda. Put the beans in a saucepan says the beans, I thought we were doing peas. Anyway, put the peas in a saucepan, cover with 650 ml of cold water, bring to the boil, reduce the heat and simmer for 30 minutes until tender, stirring occasionally. Step three, mash briefly and then stir in butter, mint and lemon and seasoning to taste. And there you have mushy peas. And if you've never had mushy peas, maybe you're not from Britain or maybe you are from Britain, and you've just not had them before, go to the chip shop, get yourself fish and chips and mushy peas. All right, guys, well, thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do follow us on our journey to become more self-sufficient. And if you can give me any tips, please do. If I can give you any, I will do. And that's what it's all about. The YouTube community is all about teaching each other whatever we can and learning and growing from there. So thanks very much and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.